Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 19 of Solar Civilization, and yes, I am still using my terrible microphone, but I think this will sound slightly better than the last video I did, which sounded terrible. Sorry for that, but um, I will be getting a new microphone at some point. Uh, but anyway, back to Solar Civilization. I haven't put one of these out for a while, because I have been busy not feeling like playing games. Um, that's just, you know, me. So, uh, yeah, sorry, but uh, it would have been not good videos if I'd just been kind of forcing myself to do them. But, um, yeah, but I'm back and, you know, doing more stuff. And you probably haven't even noticed, because it probably hasn't been very long at all. Just me being all neurotic in my head. But anyway, this is the Icarus Mark 1, which... Icarus Mark 3, actually. Um, this is the Icarus Mark 3, which we, um, saw in the last episode going to orbit. It is an old-school single stage to orbit, in that it uses two kinds of engines as opposed to the multi-mode engines. Um, yeah, but anyway, we have to bring this back, and this has been sped up because it is rather boring watching, uh, planes come back at normal speed. It's all right to fly them, but it is just a bit... When you know how to do it, it's just kind of routine. But I do quite like doing it. I mean, it's just fun returning anything to Cubbin. And then we get some mad flip out, and that's always fun. And that goes badly. This isn't a great re-entry. I recorded this a while ago, but it didn't go brilliantly. As you may be able to see, it is because it is unstable, so I pumped the fuel forward. Um, I believe that's what I did. I, I moved the fuel around so it was more stable, and everything is fine-ish. Um, and I'm using the air brakes to stabilize myself. But yeah, this is going to require a lot of hardcore gliding to get me through, because I basically just bled off about 300 meters a second of um, velocity, which isn't great when you need to get a quarter of a way around a planet. <clears throat> but I do have tons of fuel, so I can just literally fly there, and I think that's what I end up doing. Um, but yeah, Nell Bart and Rob Bass Kerman are probably hoping that I don't screw this up, especially because I don't think there's an abort system on this. Um, really should put that in. Abort systems are pretty useful. Um, the, I use the Vanguard a parachute ejection thing, which is very useful. Um, I use it on my shuttle and various other things, but uh, I'm sure they'll be able to pilot this. It's a very, it's a surprisingly stable plane, but it actually it's not brilliant without uh, SAS, but still. Anyway, I'm managing to kind of glide a bit. You've kind of got to uh, bounce it, bounce the, uh, kind of trying to lift your nose up um, and trying not to bleed off too much velocity. Um, but, you know, I try to do that as much as possible, I guess. And I'm just pumping more fuel forward because um, we want it to be nose heavier because uh, it would be unstable otherwise. And this did have a ton of fuel left over from um, getting to orbit, so I'll take that into account next time I fly to orbit with this uh, this spacecraft as it is. I was going to call it an aircraft, which it is as well. It is a multi... Um, what would it be? Multi-scenario craft, I guess. But anyway, now let's ignite the turbojet engines, get up to some ridiculous speeds, and uh, try to get back to the space center as quickly as possible, because the pilot might get a little bored if it takes too long. Um, that is an annoying thing about long flights, as they are kind of boring. So I haven't done much exploring Kerbin, but I probably will at some point, because there is a lot of science to be gained. Um, and I don't, uh, And I don't really do that thing where I return capsules and just do all the science there anymore, and I do need to fly some experiments out to like the Arctic and the tundra and deserts and things, and just kind of, you know, get as much uh, science as possible, because, you know, you want to hoover up science. Um, there's still a lot to be done on the moon and Minmus, and that will be done fairly soon. Um, well, whenever I get around to it. I've kind of got lots of things going, because, I mean, this series originally had so many things I wanted to do, like space fighters, which may be in this episode, kind of, um, and then just a whole bunch of other stuff, which I, you know, haven't really been getting around to, because I've been working on, you know, playing uh, just the game and sending stuff out to various planets, which you'll see a bit more of in this episode, kind of. A lot of seeing things kind of in this episode is what's coming up. Not really spoiler alert, but whatever. Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll just clear these mountains. Uh, they do look really high, but I think at the highest point they're about five and a, five and a half kilometers, so I do have a lot of clearance. Um, but it would be annoying to hit those mountains, it's rather hard to land on them. Because they're mountains! And ugh, I, my voice is doing that thing, not my voice, it's like I need to, I don't know, not sneeze, maybe hiccup. It feels like I need to hiccup, but uh, um, but, uh, but my body's like, eh, yeah, it's just a reflex. I don't really know what's going on. Um, that probably sounded totally crazy. Which would make sense, because I am totally crazy. But anyway, we're nearing the space center now, and um, 
just lining up with the runway. Uh, this is fairly routine for me now. I've done it a ridiculous amount of times um, on the series. I've re returned quite a lot of shuttles. I've uh, returned a load of shuttles and SSTOs on other saves and things, so I'm getting pretty proficient at this. Um, not to say that I don't use in-atmosphere quick saving, because that is a godsend for terrible pilots like myself, um, but these air brakes do give you a ridiculous amount of control. Um, I think they're very overpowered, but I'm not really sure. I'm no air brake expert. Um, but anyway, uh, as we approach the runway, I'll slow down into one times time accelerate so we can watch the landing in real time. Um, yeah, but anyway, we're just kind of nosing down because I want to get low down and land near the front of the runway. But I will pull up before I hit the runway because uh, it's kind of not great to hit on one wheel that's forward. You know, unicycles aren't great. Um, or like bike planes, like, uh, like a, a certain Duna bike from Interstellar Quest. But anyway, uh, now we land and almost trash the plane, but it's fine. We'll just head off the runway because we don't want to break our very nice runway. The uh, aeronautical division will be very angry. But anyway, let's gently slow down because this is surprisingly unstable on landing, so even though the wheelbase is really wide and it's quite a low down plane. But uh, yeah, so I just gradually slow down and then decide that this should really end on the runway because it does look quite cool when you return something to the runway so I just pull a hard right and I'm like I'm getting this on the runway um, it's kind of not as much finesse as landing perfectly but uh, you know it's better than nothing I guess um, so we'll just turn and go up this ramp uh, yeah there we go all the way onto the runway and perfect to space and to space from the runway and back from the run back to the runway perfect not a single hitch but anyway, let's uh, switch over to something else. This looks like the exact same plane. Why would you show me this again, you must be asking. But there are a couple of things on the wings. Those are missiles. The military, of course, have asked the aeronautical division to see um, if they can use one of their planes to try and engineer a spaceborne fighter. This is just a test flight, so it won't be going to space, because I don't really know how it flies with missiles. Hint, not very well. Um, but yeah, the military would obviously like a presence in space because they feel like it's getting away from them and they don't have enough authority. Um, but, uh, you know, storytelling aside, it is just fun to make fighters and uh, blow things up, especially in space. Uh -huh. Talking of which, uh, Operation Blackhawk. That, I am working on another episode, but it's kind of going slowly because I'm busy and it's kind of quite a lot of work. But it will be coming soon because it has had a very long break since the last one. Um, but anyway, this is flying quite stably, actually. It's quite nice. Those uh, extra weight kind of gives it a bit of... I don't know, it feels a little more stable, but it's 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 kind of not amazing. But uh, I will build a better one at some point, I reckon, with um, with more stability. Anyway, I've targeted um, some debris, a very old um, plane that crashed, killing Kurt Kerman, and we hate that debris because Kurt Kerman died, and we lost... <coughs> not Kurt. Kirk. No, it was Kurt. Yeah. <clears throat> Kirk. There you do get a Kirk Kerman, that's quite cool, because you're like, ah, oh, it's Captain Kirk. But no, this was Kurt Kerman. As in, um I can't think of any famous Kurtz, but anyway. Um So yeah, let's just line up and blow this thing up because screw the memory of dead Kerbals, I don't know. Um but anyway, I've switched off the engines because we're going quite fast, like Mark Mac 0.4. But anyway, we'll just kind of line ourselves up and hope that these are accurate in uh in air, but these are of course spaceborne missiles, so it doesn't really matter how well they work in atmosphere, it's a completely different environment. Um, they are just fuel tanks with Cepatrons on them, uh, because that's a simple thing to make, and it's nice to have a f uh, with those fuel tanks because those are quite heavy, so they give a pretty big punch when they hit a spacecraft. Um, and I like using Cepatrons as opposed to rocket motors because they're just better for missiles. But anyway, we're lining up, and we've deployed our missiles and they fall about a hundred meters short but still they made a nice little explosion so that's always good that's all we want just a uh, little just yeah it would have been nice to hit the debris but it doesn't really matter because this is just a test flight the first test flight of this there have been other um, uh, fighter aircrafts but they have not been bound for space and this will one day go to space and probably not do a huge amount but maybe it'll have a big old battle with something else probably another one of these, because that'll be simpler. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. There have been no space rebellions yet. There are, in fact, no space bases, except the uh, Prospector Station. Um, 
I mean, there's a crew heading out to Duna in a big old spacecraft. There's going to be one heading out to Eve, so I guess that kind of counts. But uh, I'd like to be doing moon bases and minimus bases, and I'd really like to do a jewel base, just like take a load of stuff, two really huge ships. I have this kind of vision of taking two really huge ships, one with like all the supplies and stuff, and one with all the other cool toys, and we'd just have a big old, big old fun time around jewel. <laughs> So maybe I'll uh, do that at some point. Probably with our next jewel window, although we have never been to jewel before. I think there's a probe going there, so that can tell us a bunch of stuff, but eh, we know enough about Kerbal Space Program to send stuff there. It's just life support that I'm really worried about, because uh, they're going to be there for a very long time. And the thing with um, the stuff that makes that regenerates life support is um, all, almost all of them create waste, so you have to take even more containers for waste, so you might as well just take... Um, life support containers and no reusable stuff. Although, if there's a waste reuser, that'll be good. I'm not sure if there is. I'll have to check that out. But anyway, we're coming in for a nice little um, to hit the runway. Well, not hit the runway. Touch the runway very gently and slow down hopefully. Um, yeah, the missile mounts on this are pretty terrible. They're just good. As, but uh, it would be um, it would be nice to have something slightly, uh, slightly more aerodynamic and slightly more aesthetic. But uh, well, we're going to have to work on that, I guess, um, when I get more parts. Because I haven't unlocked a huge amount of stuff. I need to do more science. I need, uh, we need more science. We need more science. Um, but anyway, the annoying thing right now is that when I press brake, it only activates one air brake. So I have to manually deploy the other one. So this is an annoying landing. Um, not as annoying as one I did recently with this new plane I developed in some other save, it was just an awful landing. The engines exploded high up because of um, interstellar, and then when I landed, only one air brake worked, and then I like smashed off a fuel tank on the runway um, that was mounted on the wing, and it was a horrible landing. It was cool, but it was not very fun. But anyway, we've deployed the air brakes, and they're kind of going to have to be stuck there, because if I release the brakes, one will still be stuck pointing upwards, and that'll give me, you know, weird yaw, yaw kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, we're coming down, and it's coming yeah, kind of fast. But uh, we touch down, and everything looks kind of fine, and then I realize, oh, got to keep on the brakes. But if I brake too hard, it'll screw everything up. But if I don't brake hard, if I don't keep braking, it'll yaw to the right, and we really don't want that. Um, or yaw to, yeah, it'll yaw to the right, that's what'll happen. But anyway, it slows down fine, everything's great, and uh, the military will hopefully be sending one of these into space, all of the storytelling and such. But anyway, we have a new bit for the... Um, Eve Explorer. This is the drive section on um, my Triton 1 launch vehicle with boosters that have parachutes on them because they're reusable. I put them on there just kind of for the precedent of reusable um, boosters um, because I won't actually follow them down, but it's a nice idea of thinking, yeah, these will land ish. Um, but yeah, I'll still reuse the main stage visually and stuff. Um, but I'm thinking I want to develop some more launch vehicles, because as amazing as this one is, um, I want some heavier lifters, and I really want to unlock some 3.5 meter parts and build like a space launch system sort of thing, because those are really cool. But I'll have to be doing more science. Okay, I'm going to do, be doing more science in future episodes, probably, because I've been doing a lot of orbital construction, but um, it'd be nice to get more science and build like a big space launch system that I can just do like a mission to Duna, say, in like a... Uh, one in just one launch. That'd be that's that's the dream. Um, but anyway, this is a throttle back to um, a quarter per uh, uh, two thirds. One second. <coughs> oh, sorry, coughing. I have some awful cough. I'll cut that out of the audio because it'll be a horrible thing to to hear. But anyway, um, <coughs> oh god, uh, yeah. What was I saying? Oh yeah, it would be nice to have really big launch vehicles, and that's what I'm going to shoot for. I want 3.5 meter parts. I want to do some cool stuff. I want to be moving on to cooler things, because I've kind of been stuck in a doing similar things for ages sort of deal. But anyway, we've dropped them, the shoots go, something explodes, but we'll forget about that. Um, I think it was just one of the Sceptrons, but that should reuse. But then this is annoying. <clears throat> this just starts kind of pitching up and yawing to the right, it's just, and it's just been doing this loads, like, I have probably tried this about seven times today, and it's done the same thing, and I've done lots of upgrades, lots of strutting, lots of different things, and it keeps just screwing up, and it's really annoying. Um, so this just kind of was a bit of a failed launch, in that it failed, and just started pointing south, and was like, eh, I'm going over here. I 
reckon the software was hacked by some evil corporation. But anyway, I ditched the fairings to try and inspect what is going on. Everything looks kind of fine, because I was mount launching it from the nuclear engines, but there were problems with connection on that, so I flipped around, and then it just started doing it anyway. And then, I don't know, this got very, very annoying. And I like Kerbal Space Program, I like problem solving, but when this keeps happening, you're just kind of like, I hate you, Kerbal Space Program. That's how my voice goes when I'm angry. I get all evil. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I let the stage burn out for... Yeah, yeah. And then I just do the thing where I just decouple the rocket randomly and activate all the engines, and that was very annoying. So this is a failed launch. But, um... This is when I decided to develop a new launch vehicle, just for shenanigans. This is a kind of... This is using some of the new NASA parts, uh, the 2.5 meter ones. Uh, this is a very annoying launch. This, uh... There was a problem with symmetry, so there's so there's actually a launch drive embedded in the main stage. So I throttle up, everything's swaying, I'm wondering what's going on, and then I throttle up, I ignite the engines now. Or now, oh no, now I inspect why it's swaying. Have no idea, don't notice the uh, launch drive, oh, then it explodes. That was annoying. Um, and this, uh, yeah, so I decide to try again, um, and this is all actually within on the same day, so I have kind of left the um, one week thing apart, but uh, the next one doesn't go great either, so I'll leave it a week till I launch another one, because we have time, and it is, you know, I can't just keep keep just abandoning rules, but anyway, this was kind of designed in to look a bit like um, the Delta IV Heavy rocket, because I really like the look of that, and it's using those... Uh, um, NASA parts with the two engines. I really like them, but um, this vehicle was annoying. I think maybe there's a problem with one of the mods or something, or maybe it's just me, my ineptitude, because I haven't really been playing Kerbal Space Program a huge... Oh, no, I have! I've been playing it tons on other saves, just... Is it just this save? I don't know. And the um, rescaled Kerbin one, that's broken. All of my Kerbal is breaking, and my personal save keeps crashing, and then this breaks. I mean, what is going on? Everything is just breaking and falling apart. So, I hope you'll join me for the next episode, which will be hopefully a lot less launch failures, and a lot more doing awesome stuff. Um, I hope I haven't complained too much this episode, but I have a lot to complain about. Anyway, this has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.